Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter Gilmer here on this Sunday afternoon. Back at you again with another video right here on Killer of Demons 669. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below. And subscribe to my all my other channels as well. And find me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. That's all you gotta do. Tap that bell. Turn on all my notifications so you never miss an upload. That's it. All right, Captain Gilmore, once again, here, right here, Captain Gilmore of the Soldiers of the Wasteland, back at you again with another video. On this Sunday afternoon, football Sunday, we got the Chiefs and the uh, Houston Texans. Texans came out hot, well, up 21 nothing, and now they're like, ah, 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 choking it, and... Chiefs just scored four touchdowns in a span of five minutes. Now it's 28 to 24. Uh, just at the half right now. So Casey is just obl obliterating Houston after uh, getting beat in the first uh, almost quarter and a half of football. KC is just pouring it on. It's 28 to 24 now. We'll see what happens with that in the second half. And then we got the Packers and the Seacocks uh, later tonight in a couple of, about an hour and a half or so. See who goes to the NFC title game to face the Niners next Sunday night at 6 p.m. It's like 6:30 somewhere around there. Let's see what happens with that. My my opinion, I hope it's the Packers so we can beat Aaron Rodgers again. <laughs> What happens with that? It'll be a good game next week. Whoever plays the Niners, it'll be a close game and foot wrenching. Hopefully, I'm off so I can watch the damn thing and blow up my voice. But uh, it is what it is, and that's it. So we got football, got wrestling on tonight at uh, NXT UK Takeover Blackpool Two. Um, I heard it was pretty good. A pretty good show. I didn't. I don't care about the your NXT UK that much. I don't watch the product, so I'm not even gonna bother talking about it. Uh, we got TNA Hard to Kill later tonight. Uh, Tessa Blanchard and Sammy Callahan for the world title. See what happens with with that and with uh, Tessa. Uh, she's already been kicked off a uh, indie show on January the 24th. So, or 25th, uh, somewhere around the 24th, 25th, uh, for heavy metal wrestling, it is. So, the punishment is being handed down for Tessa, and uh, Tessa's got her foot in her mouth for, you know, being hypocritical on that tweet she sent. But I'll talk about that in another video. I'll uh, come up maybe later tonight, but we'll see. For now, it is time on this Sunday afternoon. January the 12th, 2020, it is time for your late and out-of-date SmackDown review for January the 10th, 2020 on Fox TV. Another week of SmackDown, the second week of, uh, of, of uh, January, well, the second show of January, I should say. And this show is another bleh, another boring show. I don't know what's up with, with, with WWE. They've been putting on really boring shows. And that's what Raw and SmackDown is. The creative team is boring. I mean, you got... You got Paul Heyman doing his best on Raw. And uh, who's pictured on SmackDown. Doing what they can. You know, it just looks like it's a regular freaking house show. It's like you go to SmackDown, you're like, yes, yeah, SmackDown! I'm gonna be on TV! Oh, wait. And then you're like, oh, man, this feels like a house show. You go to a pay-per-view, it feels like a house show. Some of these pay-per-views have just stunk lately. And you got the big, one of the, the big four of the year, the Royal Rumble coming up in two weeks from tonight. And you got most of the most of the card almost set up. 
Now you got the men's and women's Royal Rumble. You got Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan. You got um, uh, I believe that's it for now. Uh, you know, men's and women's Royal Rumble, and then you got Brock Lesnar entering the Royal Rumble at number one, and then you got Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt for the Universal Title. And that's basically it right now. So you got really got three, maybe four matches announced. And over the next two weeks, we'll, we'll uh, see what else becomes of that as uh, we go on with SmackDown and Raw. But like I said, SmackDown was boring. And uh, let's just get right into it, shall we? I think we should. So we start off this night with Miz TV. The Miz comes out, uh, wrestling gear, in a fight. Does his usual intro. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the most, most, most must-see TV show in history. Welcome to Ms. TV. That I don't know how it goes, but it is what it is. Uh, he said things have changed. He said he, he may have changed last week uh, after getting out of, the, out of the freaking arena after losing to Kofi and then beating up Kofi at the, at the end of the match. He says he just had a bad day and didn't want to smile, and that's why he attacked Kofi. His temper got the best of him, and he apologizes to Kofi. He said the Fiend has put him through a lot. He failed to beat him, and the only good thing to happen was the return of his guest, John Morrison, the Shaman of Saxey, comes back to SmackDown, comes back to the WWE. Though I rather have it, would have had it at the Royal Rumble as a surprise entry, but we're not gonna get him as a surprise entry. We all know he's gonna be in the Rumble now. So uh, he gets the welcome back chance. Miz says this is awesome while uh, putting him over as a great tag team, a former two-time. Tag Team Champions, from Slammy Award winners as well. <coughs> uh, and then he leads us into a big uh, John Morrison video package, highlighting his, his basically his, uh, his three reigns as Intercontinental Champion, uh, some of his WrestleMania entrances and moments with the Money in the Bank match they had at WrestleMania, I think, 31. Uh... Then uh, they, they really didn't show his ECW title reign. I don't know. I, I don't know why they could have. Sh- well, I guess, I guess they didn't show that because CM Punk was was involved in most of it, so that's probably why they didn't show that. S- stupid, but it is what it is. Uh, <coughs> so Miz welcomes him back, and Marshall says he's glad to be back. He mentions they filmed a WWE Chronicle for his return. He saw what, what Miz was going through, and he felt he needed to be, be here for Miz. <clears throat> he talked a little bit last week, and he realized that the, he's disappointed in fans, not Miz or else. Uh, he says his friend had one bad day, and you trash him. Miz has worked hard for 15 years, became the WWE champion, and is only his dad's fifth favorite wrestler. He better than Kofi. well, Kofi's like number two or something like that. I don't know. Uh, he says the fans don't get it. Miz does what he does for, <coughs> uh, for the fans, and the fans don't understand because they've never been in the ring. And then we get the new day, yeah. Biggie and Kofi. Kofi Kingston comes out with, with his pancakes, rolls him into the crowd like a lunatic. Um, uh, and then Kofi's like. Hey Miz, who are you trying to fool? You know, you're you're trying to blame the fans. Biggie doesn't accept his apology and bashes his bad acting. I guess he he watched the Marine Six. It is what it is. Uh, Kofi would have respected him if he would have stopped at he had a bad day. That would have been respectable. Excuse me. And um, uh, Miz respects Kofi uh, when he was WWE champion for six months. <clears throat> and the six seconds it took him to lose it, he smiles about that. Eight seconds. Uh, Kofi mentions that. Um, and Miz has changed from cool Miz to annoying, obnoxious Miz. And the people are right when they say, suck. So we get that. So that leads to the match, the rematch from last week. I gave the segment 2.25 out of 5 stars. It was okay. And then we get to the match, we have Biggie and Morrison on commentary, which was kind of funny. Uh, them going back and forth. 
a little bit. And then, you know, so when they lock up, they do some counters. Kofi lands some kicks and grounds Miz a little bit. He follows up with some with a drop kick. Miz cuts him off. So Kofi clears him off for two after a uh, really sloppy counter exchange. Somebody botched, but it is what it is. Miz takes control and he grounds things for a little bit. Kofi comes back with a back elbow, dumps the Miz to the outside. He hits a suicide dive. And Miz shoves him into Big E, which kind of angered Big E. And then he had to be uh, separated by the referee. But break. We come back. This is in the is in uh, is in what of the of the Miz and Big E's on the outside with in the corner of Kofi. So uh, Kofi hits a belly to back suplex on the Miz. Falls up with some chops, a clothesline, and the boom, boom. he goes to Trouble Paradise. Is countered. Miz attacks the knee. And he goes to work on it for a little bit. DT for a near fall. He follows it with some kicks, but then Kofi counters and cradles Miz up for two. Then he hits the SOS for a two count. Miz goes back to work on the knee uh, until Kofi cuts him off. Miz quickly cuts him off again. Uh, locks on the figure four. Kofi makes the rope, spills to the floor. Um, then we see uh, Big E trying to, you know, cheer his buddy on. Miz kicks Big E right in the head. And then he shows him a little bit. Big E get, starts getting pissed off. And then out of nowhere, Morrison comes off the ring steps with a flip. One of those uh, karate moves he does. I guess, he, they said a cannonball, but it didn't, it didn't even look like a cannonball. But uh, it was like one of those flips that, that you see in a lot of Japanese karate movies. He did that. Knocks Big E down. Uh, Kofi's distracted, and while this is going on, Miz grabs him, hits the skull-crushing finale for the win, get his win back. So, a little bit of a rough start, but got a little bit better. So, I gave it two and a half out of five stars. Um, so, it was good, you know, great to see Morrison back, and now maybe you can, you put, you can put Morrison back with the Miz, let them go after Kofi and... And uh, and Big E, and then let them win the belts maybe at the at the Royal Rumble, and this will probably be the start of Big E's uh eventual heel turn. A lot of people are saying that it's gonna start and it's gonna con- kind of culminate with a match at the ro- at the uh, at WrestleMania between Kofi and Big E, and when Xavier comes back, you know Xavier's gonna be the be. A friend of of Kofi is gonna be coming out with Kofi most of the time, and then they're gonna be like a tag team going after the tag team belts. And Biggie's just gonna be, you know, by himself. You know, what he used to be when it was with Dolph Ziggler, and when he was when he was NXT champion, running through the the roster, and then possibly getting the uh, WWE Universal title. But I doubt that. But we'll see what happens. So get the match. Like I said, two and a half out of five stars, and we'll see what happens with all four men. Uh, going into next week's show. And I'll tell you about that. Alright, then it's time for the Firefly Funhouse. Uh, Bray, he comes out and says, Come here. Closer. Closer. I got something to tell you. I love you! So he says he loves us. And that love is special. Uh, he says, but the Fiend doesn't love Daniel Bryan. Because he's been a naughty, naughty boy. And he's in big trouble at the Rumble. And then he says, The Fiend wants to hurt you, Daniel. And then he ends with, I love you, not you, Daniel. So that's it. He's like, Bye. See you later. I love you, not you, Daniel, but I love you. Kind of corny, but okay. Gets your point across with, uh, you know, the little the feud that's going on. So a little bit of storyline progression with, with Bray Wyatt. Uh, we'll see what happens this Friday night on the, on um, SmackDown M as we get closer and closer to their match at the Royal Rumble, which I I really think that Bray's gonna win again, uh, and then he's gonna go on to uh, probably be off the Elimination Chamber because he's not gonna be uh, I doubt he's gonna be in the Elimination Chamber defending his the Universal Title because I think Roman's gonna win that one, the number one contender sh- match, and then. They're gonna have a match, and you know they're gonna go all the way up and up until WrestleMania, going back and forth with promos and back and forth with attacks and all this other stuff. 
Then at WrestleMania, we all know uh, Bray's gonna lose the lose his undefeated streak and the belt to Roman, and Roman's gonna hold the belt that he really never lost again for like six months, just half to death. I really want him to, if he does win the belt, I want him to lose it at lose it at SummerSlam. So maybe um, well, can't be Randy Orton. Um, who else could I think of that's a face that could probably beat well a heel? I should say. Um, maybe be Shinsuke Nakamura, maybe be Braun Strowman to go that route again. I really don't want them to. Could be the Miz. You know, Bray Wyatt could still be involved in it. You know, you could put Daniel Bryan in there again, but you know, as face versus face, maybe I don't know. But we'll see what happens with that. So that's all I gotta say about. It. So I gave that two point two five out of five stars, and that's it. All right, then we go to backstage with Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. They're talking. As Mandy's preparing for her match with Alexa Bliss. Uh, Sonya's like, yeah, Fight and Desire are back. We're going to win matches and all this other stuff. And Mandy's just like getting ready. And there's a big box in her locker room. You know, locker, whatever. It's, you know, where, where she puts her stuff. And she's kind of distracted. And Sony, Sonya's like, Mandy, you, you, you're listening to this? You know? You ready? Let's go. Let's go. Mandy's like, uh, I have to take care of something. I'll be right there. And um, she grabs a big box that looks like a cake box, opens it, and she seems happy. And looks like it's gonna be for Otis, but uh, we'll see what happens with that. As the uh, the ever growing Otis Mandy love angle continues, we'll see what happens with that. So I give that two out of five stars, and that's it. We go to commercial. We come back with Elias. Who wants to walk with Elias? And um. Uh, he comes out, does another song, talks about the Rumble, basically mocks Brock, talks about Ricochet a little bit, most of the people in the Rumble, like Orton and you know, Ricochet and Brock, mostly. Um, and then he proclaims he's going to win it, like he did last week. So basically, a re like a, you know, a continuation of, of his song last week. And uh, that's basically all it is for that. So we'll see what happens with Elias as we roll into the Royal Rumble. I don't know where Elias will 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 come out as. I would think maybe in the mid teens. I don't think he's gonna come out later than fifteen, maybe. He'll be there. I don't think he's gonna win. I think he's gonna get eliminated by Brock. Brock's probably gonna eliminate everybody until someone like. Roman Reigns or Keith Lee or Matt Riddle come out, and then he's gonna ha he's gonna be working a lot a little bit. I don't think he's gonna last the entire Royal Rumble. He's not gonna last sixty damn minutes or what or an hour and a half or whatever amount of time the Royal the uh, Royal Rumble match takes uh, it takes place. Or t you know how long it takes, <coughs> but he's not gonna be in there for long. And somebody like, I would think like Drew McIntyre. Or Keith Lee are gonna, gonna not are gonna eliminate him, and possibly, you know, if if Drew McIntyre does win the win the uh, the Royal Rumble match, he gets to face Brock at the Roy at at WrestleMania. I think Drew will win the win the belt for the first time in and you know the first time in WWE champion. On a nice little run with it. You know, maybe he'll face guys like Ricochet, face maybe Randy Orton, AJ. You know, be Seth Rollins, maybe uh, Drew. Uh, it's gonna be Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe. We'll see what happens with that, and uh, that's pretty much it. So we'll see what happens with Elias and company uh, in the next couple weeks, and uh, that's it. So that's there's your more storyline progression with the men's. Uh, Actually, they haven't really done anything with the women, really. Just talk to Charlotte's, Charlotte's in the in the Royal Rumble. whoop de damn do. That's it. So maybe on this this coming week they'll do they'll talk a little bit about the women's Royal Rumble. You know, maybe Charlotte will just come out and say, "I'm the queen. I'm into, I'm in the Royal Rumble, and anybody else who comes gets in my way is gonna get taken down. And I'm gonna win the Royal Rumble, go on to WrestleMania, get my title back." Go on to face Becky or who or Oscar and get my title back. So let's we'll see. That's it. So that's it. All right, then we uh, go backstage with Heavy Machinery, Otis and Tucker. 
They're talking. And Otis is doing weird faces. And then Mandy Rose comes in with the, with the cake. And Tucker's like, don't accept it. Let's go. We gotta get ready for the Royal Rumble. And uh, here's Otis the cake that she made. And she opens it. It says, I'm sorry on it. And then uh, she starts smiling at Otis. And then Otis is like, cake! Yummy! So he's all mesmerized again. We'll see what happens with Otis, you know, love love angle that's going on. Maybe he'll forgive Mandy for uh, trying to cheat on him uh, two weeks ago with, with Dolph Ziggler. Uh, she, she's like, I didn't know how um, I could uh, you know, try to try to say this or you know, try to get to you, blah, blah, blah. And this is how she did it. She bought him a cake. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about that, so. But good looking cake, by the way. Um, Blue, blue icing and blue frosting and all that good stuff. Yummy. Give me some of that cake. Give me some of Mandy Rose, too. That's all I say about that. And that's it. And speaking of Mandy Rose, we get to the next match with her and Alexa Bliss. We had Nikki Cross and Sonya Deville at ringside. The match was decent. It wasn't great. But uh, they lock up. Uh, then they trade ships, shoulder tackles, and pushing and shoving. They start talking some smack. Alexa then slaps the taste out of Mandy's mouth. And then uh, Alexa follows up with some kicks, slaps her again. Mandy comes back. Alexa fires back with a slap and then dumps Mandy in the ring. It dumps Mandy to the outside, I should say. Follows up with a drop kick. And then uh, Nikki and Sonya fight on the outside as Mandy hits the running knee strike for a near fall. Chokes Alexa out on the ropes, then does some ground and pound. Alexa fires back. And then they trade. Shots back and forth. They work. They work uh, until both women go down. And Alexa comes back with some clotheslines, some slaps, and a double knee moon salts. And then we hear the music of heavy machinery. Otis and Tucker come out. Otis is, you know, eating the cake, and um, Alexa's like, "What the fuck is going on?" While this is going, while this is going on, Mandy cradles Alexa with a 1922 schoolgirl. And she gets the win, and oh, and always like he's like licking the cake. He's like ah, with his tongue, like being really disgusting. But uh, yeah, I, I'm getting sick of all these freaking distractions. And you know, during the end, the, in the middle, the end of the match, just do it after the match. You know, it's it's better off. You know, but that's all I gotta say about that. So. So yeah, so Mandy wins. Whoop de damn do. Four minute match. Uh, I gave two and a half out of five stars, but you know I was generous on that. But it is what it is. And we'll see what happens with Otis and uh and Mandy and company uh, as we as we go into the next week show and we see what happens. That's it. All right, then we get Bailey. Don't give me a hug. Uh, she arrives on the screen as it was supposed to be Lacey Evans and Sasha Banks doing battle, and Lacey trying to get her hands on Sasha. So Bailey's on on the Titan Tron. She says Sasha isn't here because she's finishing her rap album in L.A. I guess uh, she's b with her cousin Snoop Dogg, you know, making that album. So uh, Lacey says Sasha is too busy while she's she's always ready to fight. So she challenges Bailey to take Sasha's place and to put the title on the line. Bailey's like, no. And then makes fun of Lacey, Lacey's kid. Lacey's like, I'm going backstage to kick your ass. But so they go backstage. Bailey attacks her from behind. They brawl a little bit. And it's like, I'm going to take care of your, your mom bod or something like that. Uh, she, she tells her to put on her mom jeans and stuff like that. And then agents and producers come out. And uh, they they separate Lacey from Bailey, so we get that. So now we get the little a little bit of a storyline progression with Lacey Evans, possibly with a SmackDown Women's Title match against is Bailey. I'm hoping they give give it to Lacey Evans. I really think they should because Bailey has been really boring as of late. But we'll see what happens with that. And then you you know on the on the Raw side you got Oscar and Becky Lynch. 
And, uh, we'll, you know, we'll see what happens with that. So, we got five matches announced for the show. The men's and women's Royal Rumble. Oscar and Becky Lynch. Uh, possibly Bailey and E.C. Evans. That's four. And they got Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan. That's just five. So, it'll probably be three or, three or four more. Maybe a kickoff match here and there. But, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Because it's probably going to be like a five, maybe six hour show. Uh, on January the 26th, probably gonna start like at 5, about 5 or 6 p.m. And then go all the way to like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Yep, right, right around the, when when you're watching the Pro Bowl, so if you want to watch the Pro Bowl, don't want to watch the Royal Rumble, do it, do whatever you want. I might watch most of the Royal Rumble, I'm not gonna watch all of it. But I might get butt tired, if I get, if I get bored with it, I'm probably just gonna stop, and then I'm gonna read the results later. And then maybe watch what I missed. But we'll see what happens with that. So, I gave Lacey and Bailey two out of five stars. We'll see what happens next week on the program. And uh, that's it. All right, there we get an interview with Daniel Bryan. Yes! And uh, Bryan says that the Fiend True wants a lot of things. And he remembers it all. And especially outsmarting him. Uh, I think it was last week. He did change as well, but for the better. And is now more dangerous than ever before. Says the fiend can hurt, can be hurt, and can be beat by him at the rumble. Then we see the rambling rabbit appear on the screen. He's like, Daniel, Daniel, I got a secret how to beat the fiend. And before he met, talks about that, I like, grabs him and like grabs his head and smushes it a little bit. And um, he's like, snitches get stitches. He tells Brian to let me in. And that's it. So a little bit more progression and match going into the Royal Rumble. So uh, we'll see what happens from there. I gave that 2.25 out of 5 stars. And that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Let me move on. All right, then we go back to the ring with our next match. Uh, we got the Intercontinental Champion, Shinsuke Nakamura. On Bronze The non-title match. Not a bad match. We had Sami Zayn and Cesar at ringside, as usual. Uh, so also with, with Braun attacking. And runs wild to begin. Because Zerk and Nakamura has to take a breather. Nakamura comes back with some kicks and some strikes. And then runs into a big boot by Braun. Braun goes back to work on Nakamura. With some chops and into the turnbuckle. Hits a corner splash. And then Nakamura goes back outside for a powder. And Braun falls him out, lays the boots to him until Cesaro sends him into the ring post, which allows Nakamura to attack him as with a break. We come back, Nakamura works him over in the corner with with <laughs> vibrations. And um it's an insecurity, then a second rope knee strike for a near fall. Then he grounds some things, Braun powers up, cut off with a spin kick. Uh, but Braun gets back up, cuts him off with a big clothesline, some tackles and a and a big blow for a near fall. Goes to the power slam, Nakamura counters it. It's a running kick and then a knee strike for an fall. Falls up with some grounded knee strikes until Braun hits a spine buster. Uh, and then Sammy get, Sammy Zane gets on the apron, takes the, takes the ref, distracts him. Cesaro comes in, Braun takes him out, and then Nakamura has the belt. Braun counters into a power slam for the win. So you now Sammy's plan to possibly get a, a cheap win. Out of out of Nakamura and get a cheap win over Braun Strowman backfired. Uh, so Braun gets the win, non-title match. So he is guaranteed a title match now, probably at the Royal Rumble, which is, kind of sets the title match up for the Royal Rumble, which I still think Shinsuke is gonna win. He's held that belt for a very long time. Well, not that long, but you know, getting the new look belt, in, I believe, was in around October. So he's held it, I think, for about four or five months now. I, I lost count. He hasn't defended it much. He feels like the IC title has become the United States title. Nobody defends it. Even though Andrade's been defending it over the last couple weeks. And he'll probably defend it at the Royal Rumble as well against Rey Mysterio. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, so yeah, so... Bourne gets the win. Match gave 2.25 out of 5 stars. And sets up their match... Uh, at the Royal Rumble will probably be announced this coming week on the program. And all I gotta say about that. Alright, then we get a promo from Sheamus Fella. 
And uh, he's talking about Chad Gable. I was his change on SmackDown. And he says Gable represents what's wrong with SmackDown. He's small and needs to be exterminated. He says size matters and he will embrace chaos. That's kind of creepy. So it is what it is. So nice Sheamus promo is what it is. Uh, he'll be in the Royal Rumble most likely. And he's not going to win it either. Um, he'll do some damage. He'll kicks maybe over the top rope. But we'll see. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I give that 2.25 out of 5 stars. And you move on from there. All right, there we go to the locker room of Daniel Bryan. He finds a present in his locker room. He opens it up, and it's the bloody corpse of the Rambling Rabbit. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. And uh, we'll see. We have to see what happens with that, and we move on. And that's it. So I give that two out of five stars. All right, there we go to the ring, and it's promo time. We get. Roman Reigns, Mr. Cockfist himself. He says, 2019 was rough. He's been outnumbered and embarrassed many times, mostly by Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode. And he's always had backup, and this time he has the backup from family. I mean, the Usos. Family helped him last week, and 2020 will be his year. Let's see, uh, He will win the Rumble, main event WrestleMania, and do that with Jimmy and Jay at his side. And the Usos come out. They're all fired up. They'll be back. And uh, and they're gonna turn the turn SmackDown into Friday Night Lockdown. Okay. Uh, you see, it's been rough being on the sidelines and watching the big dog defend himself against Queen Corbin and her kingdom. Uh, they disrespected Roman, and that means he disrespected the whole family. Then Corbin and Dolph Ziggler arrive. They run down Roman for being afraid of him. Corbin vows to win the Ro Ro Royal Rumble. Hopefully not. And Roman says he'd love to beat his ass twice in one night. And challenges to a match at the Rumble. Oh, that is your uh, sixth and possibly seventh match. Um, uh, Corman accepts and promises to take out the big dog's bitches tonight. Friday night. Uh, then the Usos hit stereo dives to the outside on hit on them. As we go to break. We get the tag match in a little bit. So I gave that 2.25 out of 5 stars. And, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, then we find out that next week, John Morrison is first match back on SmackDown in a few years. He's going to take on Big E in singles competition. I think Morrison will get the win there with Starship Pain. With, with a cheap victory, I think Miz will get involved. You know, Kofi will be at ringside, of course. See what happens with that. And, uh... With their ever-growing feud that's going to be probably culminating with a tag title match at the at the Royal Rumble. Uh, maybe Miz and Morrison win the belts. But we'll see. That's it. Alright, so we get to the main event. The Usos taking on King Corbin and Dolph Ziggler. It was okay. Ending was kind of dumb. But uh, it is what it is. So uh, the Usos take control early on. Double teaming Dolph. Corbin tags in. Hits the in and out Larry for a near fall. Dolph comes back in, falls with a dropkick for a near fall. And he grounds and pounds. A little bit. Tags in Corbin. They go to work on one of the Usos. I don't know which one it was. And uh we don't know who it, we don't know who it is because Michael, Michael Cole and Corey Graves were like toggled like, who's in the ring? I don't know! They have the same hair. Uh and one of the Usos has an insecurity. And then the Revival come out. Which allows uh, Ziggler and Corbin to take control. And then after that, Roman Reigns comes out. He hits a Superman punch on both of the Revival. As we go to break. Uh, we come back. Uh, one of the Usos is running wild in the ring. And they say it's Jay. Here he goes for a dive. is cut off as Corbin slams him into, into Roman Reigns. Jay hits a super kick. And then he goes up top, hits the top rope superfly splash. And Corbin gets in the ring, sends sends Jimmy into the ring post. And then on the outside, Rain spears Corbin on the floor, causes a disqualification. So King Corbin and Dolph Ziggler pin the or well, beat the Usos by DQ. Uh, so probably you know get like a three on three match, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so afterwards. 
all, 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 all the chaos happens. And then we see Bobby woo, come back from his suspension. Uh, Tax Roman on the floor. Post head first. Then he hits the uh, glorious DDT on the floor. Then they lay out one of the Usos with, uh, well, Corbin hits deep six. And then they pick up Roman, uh, get, feed him over to Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode hits a spine buster on the announce table, but it uh, didn't break. So they lay Reigns on the table. Dolph Ziggler is, is hovering above him. He jumps and hits a diving elbow to him, and then the table breaks. And then they bury Reigns under the announce table. Like uh, Ray, uh, Roman did to Bobby Roode a couple of weeks ago. About a month ago, I should say. So, get that. So, it looked like we're going to get a six-man tag team match uh, coming up probably this coming Friday night on SmackDown. I really don't care because I want this feud that, between Roman and Aaron Coleman and Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode to end already. Pointless. You know. If it's going to end in a match and then Roman's going to do double duty... Royal Rumble is probably going to come out less than 100% anyway. Uh, uh, you know, if they're going to do this first time ever loser eats dog food match, if they, they even think about doing that, well, I don't know what they're going to do. If it's going to be just a regular match or some stipulation. Let's see, you know, I have Roman to win that, and then Roman is going to go to the Royal Rumble match, probably lose to Drew McIntyre. And, uh, and then he goes on, and then he has to fight his way to get the get a universal title shot against Bray Wyatt. He wins the Elimination Chamber, becomes the number one contender. And then he goes on to beat Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania for his WrestleMania moment. And get the universal title for the, I think, the second or third time. And he runs, runs with it for a couple months. And then uh, I think he'll probably lose it to the, the guy that wins the Money in the Bank. Could be anybody. Could be guys from Raw, SmackDown, or maybe NXT. So, and if, it's, if, it, if that match does happen at Money in the Bank, you know you have a couple guys from SmackDown, a couple guys from Raw, and a couple guys from NXT. I, this is what I have: you have John Morrison in the match, maybe the Miz. You have Ricochet, maybe Humberto Carrillo for for that. And if, if you get you know, NXT. I would put in the Velveteen Dream, making his debut. Or you bring up, uh, maybe Adam Cole. When he, when he does lose the title at, 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 by WrestleMania, you can have him enter the Money in the Bank match, maybe have him win it, and then have him cash in on Ciampa. Maybe he go, comes up to the main roster early. And he goes after uh, the WWE Universal title, or he goes after, you know, goes after Roman Reigns, or he goes after uh, whoever is the WWE champion. It would be Drew McIntyre, or uh, it would be Brock. But I doubt Brock's going to be champion by res after WrestleMania, because he's leaving after WrestleMania, never coming back. Which is a good thing. Get him out, let him bang Sable, have more kids with her, I don't give, a, give, give two shits what he does after WrestleMania. And that's it. So, we'll see what happens with that. So, like I said, probably a six-man tag team match this coming week on on SmackDown. I think the Bloodline, the Usos, and Roman will, will get the get the revenge back. And probably end up with, you know, like I said, the match is already official. Roman versus Baron Corbin, but they'll probably add a stipulation into the match. Maybe a steel cage. Or uh, something, something to that effect. Maybe loser eats dog food. I don't know. But there's gonna be a stipulation in that match with Corbin and Roman uh, at the Royal Rumble. There's gonna be a last man standing, hard corn match, or maybe a still, you know, still cage. So they really can't do hell in a cell. I think that's 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 the end all if they even get to that point, which I doubt they will. You never know though. But I would think the next step is is probably a steel cage match, and uh, I think it's the pro it would probably be if there's a steel cage. I think it's, it would probably be the first first time in WWE history that a steel cage match is at at a Royal Rumble. I might be wrong on that, but 
if anybody know, knows uh, if there was a steel cage match at a Royal Rumble, put it down below in the comment section and let me know. Like I said, I could be wrong, and I usually am, but it is what it is. Yeah, so I gave uh, all that. I gave the match 2.25 out of 5 stars. I gave the aftermath 2.5 out of 5 stars. But, all in all, SmackDown was kind of a letdown. Another letdown. Like, last week was boring. This week was boring. It was a little bit, a little, little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit better than this week. Uh, than last week, I should say. Uh, so I gave it standard 6 out of 10 stars. C, whatever you want to call it, C minus. If you're grading in letters. So, yeah, so that's pretty much all I got to say for SmackDown. And uh, we'll see what happens this coming week on the program. And that's it. So thank you for watching. Uh, leave me your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section of this video. You can do a video reply if you wish. Uh, if you have any wrestling questions, anything you want to know about the professional, rest professional wrestling, put a couple questions down below in the comment section of this video or, or any one of my future videos coming up. And hit me up via Twitter or Facebook. Link, well, the link to my... My uh, Twitter is down below in the in the description box. If you're on Facebook, just type in Peter Gilmore. You'll probably find me somewhere. And uh, send me a message. Send me a, uh, a you know, send me a, uh, a a status update, whatever we want. You know, a comment, your questions, and we'll get to a, a Q and A sometime this year, by the end of the year. I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. And uh, that's it. So send me your questions, continue to smash that like button to death, smash that subscribe button to death as well. Uh, hopefully get start getting some more subs and we get to 1,200 subs on this channel. 770 something, I, I lost count, last count. I think it was 1170, 1172, somewhere around there. Go back and forth between that. Hopefully we start moving on the upswing. We get to 1,200, then start thinking about 1,250. 1300 close to getting close to 1500 uh but that's all it's all up to you guys word of mouth so send in your questions hit that like button slash the subscribe button on this channel and all my other channels as well and share the video all over the internet and tap that bell very important to tap that bell turn on my notifications so you know when my videos are up and you never miss an upload and you don't have to go back and back a couple videos to watch watch whatever i put up and that's it. So, thank you for watching. I got uh, one or two more videos coming up tonight. Uh, uh, tomorrow, I might have a couple videos as well. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Um, depending on what, what goes on later tonight. I'm going to try to get my... Uh, I'm going to talk about Tessa Blanchard in my next video coming up after this one, whatever that'll be. Um, and then tomorrow, I'll talk about Teenage Hard to Kill, give you my review of that. And then maybe I'll give you, uh, I'll do a video about Neil Peart of Rush. And I'll give you my tribute video to him. And talk about his life, his career. And just his sad death that happened on Thursday. Or Friday, I forgot what it was. I think it was Friday. Um, so get that and then talk a little bit of music. And then, um. That's pretty much all I got to say about that. Uh, you pre-order Ozzy's new album, Ordinary Man. I've heard the first three singles already, and it's awesome. Another masterpiece by the Ozman. Uh, he's going to be in New York City, I believe, in July. I think it's July 22nd, I believe. But uh, I may or may not be going to that. Um, and plus, I'm going on vacation around that time. I'm not going to see the Ozman before he f finally retires. But I've seen him like many times, so I don't have to worry about it that much. But uh, I got got this band, Soldiers of the Wasteland, in this moment coming up April 1st in New York City. Me and the missus are hoping, hopefully going to go. Uh, I can start saving my money. I got to actually buy the tickets and save money at the same time. So hopefully by middle of February, I'll be getting the tickets if they don't sell out. I don't think they will. But you never know. If you're at Terminal 5, where uh, they have three levels and you can see everything. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get 
uh, floor, you know, general admission floor seats. I have to stand way in the back by the bar or something like that. At least I can see the fucking stage. I can see Maria and the, and the guys. And just have a rocking good time and then get home like at 1 o'clock in the morning because, it's, you know, it's going to end like around 11 o'clock. And by the time I get back to where I'm going to go to get to get the uh, the train, it's like 11.30. I might go out for a, a, a post-concert meal. I don't know. I'll probably just go straight home because I probably have work the next the next morning. But I'm going to probably see if I can uh, get that day off, get April 1st and 2nd off, and then work on that Friday and Saturday. And then have off for WrestleMania, hopefully. But uh, we'll see. So I'm going to I'm gonna X those these days off probably right before Easter. I gotta probably see if I can take either Easter. I can take Easter off or work in the morning for Easter, and then have a nice meal with Rosa and uh, my family, and then watch some baseball or actually watch watch something on on um, Easter. I don't know what programs are on Easter. I really don't give two shits. Maybe the t Ten Commandments comes out. I don't know. But we got that, and uh, that's all I gotta say about that. So thank you for watching. I uh, got another video coming up in a little bit. But for now, I'm Peter Gilmore. You knew that already. If you don't like my content. You don't like my videos. You don't like my voice. All I gotta say is, fuck you. Pick my taint. Suck my balls. And that's all I gotta say about that. So thank you very much. And that's pretty much all I gotta say about that. So thank you for watching. Send your questions down below. Subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace.